Howdy, and welcome to Lee Reads, where I talk about the books I've been reading and enjoying lately. Today I'd like to share some of my favorite science fiction. It's a mixture of older stories, newer stories, some I've talked about on the channel here before and some not, but the thing they all have in common is that they really stuck with me in some way. I've reread them multiple times or tried to encourage other people to read them or I've watched the TV or movie adaptations of them, but they stuck with me in some way. And when I think, what are my favorite science fiction stories? These are the ones that come to mind. Consequently, a lot of them are on my bookshelf if you see some, some bare spots. So I'm just gonna go in random order. A Memory Called Empire and its sequel, A Desolation Called Peace. This is a Hugo award-winning duology by Arcadia Martin. It came out a couple of years ago. It's the story about a woman who is from a small space station and she is the ambassador to a very powerful and large empire that's right alongside their borders. And she gets sent to take up her ambassador position after the previous one is murdered. And while she is there, she's trying to figure out if she's in danger too. What I really like about the story is she's a bit of a duck out of water. She's grown up learning all about this empire, but now she's experiencing it firsthand. It's about fitting in. There's themes of storytelling. I love some of the technology in here. There's a, something called an Imigo machine where the uploaded thoughts, feelings, and memories of previous people, so the previous ambassador, is uploaded into her head, but it's 10 years out of date, so they have to this older version of the ambassador in her head is working with her to try to figure out what in the world was going on. And then in the duology itself, there is a greater story that I don't want to spoil, but I just found the whole thing very satisfying. I did enjoy it mostly on audiobook because this society, that imperial society, loves storytelling. So there are sometimes like long poems and things, and I really enjoyed listening to them. It helped hold my attention a lot more. I just liked how the society was structured. I found it interesting and I also admired Mahit and enjoyed following her along on her adventure. And it's just a duology, so it packs a punch, but it's short and sweet. Another fish out of water story is drawn by Kate Elliott. The main character is the sister and heir to a human dukedom. Tessa's brother Charles controls three planets in this wider alien empire. There's this interspecies kind of wider conflict going on. Tess winds up on one of her brother's interdicted planets because there is a more primitive human species that is developing and they don't want any outside influences on their development. But when Tess winds up on this planet posing as like a scholar, she falls in with one of the native tribes and learns that the aliens are there messing around. So she gets involved kind of in this spy deception game, game, trying to figure out what the aliens are doing and is pulled into the Jurons' own struggles. So there's a lot of c conflicts going on here, interpersonal and wider. But what stuck with me was the characters. I'm a very character-driven reader, but also aspects of the Geron society. Just, I thought about them for such a long time after I finished reading this book, and it's one of my very favorites. More near science fiction, we have The Expanse by James S.A. Corey, particularly Leviathan Wakes and Caliban's War, book one and two, where we're really getting to know our cast of characters. I think those two books taken together introduce my favorite characters and really launch the story. Those books together are what season one of the, the show deals with. Frankly, I think that the show adaptation is so good. I've watched it multiple times. That's really how I get my dose of the expanse more than rereading the stories. But it is a near future science fiction. The moon, Mars, and the belt have been colonized, but now that now they are basically their own government. There's Earth and the moon, Mars and its moons, and the, the belt. It's a powder keg waiting to explode because resources are fairly scarce and the belt feels as though they're being exploited by Earth and Mars. And Earth and Mars have their own historical struggles, struggles. So they're kind of on the edge of war. And then this mining crew finds this, they don't know what it is, a derelict ship floating in space, everybody's dead. 
Is it a weapon? Who designed it? Who launched this plot? And you also have a side detective story, a detective from the belt looking for a missing person that is all involved, launches a greater, wider story. The books are fast paced. There's interesting characters. The series is now complete. It turns in to quite the space opera and it's just a really good time. Speaking of space opera, Children of Time, this whole trilogy by Adrian Tchaikovsky, the whole trilogy is really great. It deals with humanity seeking for a new home and terraforming planets and using genetic engineering and viruses in a very interesting way to try to do so. In this first book, the goal was to launch a bunch of monkeys onto the chosen planet with a virus that would speed up their evolution which a member of the scientific team tries to co-op that to her own gains. And it doesn't go right. And it turns out a different species already on the planet gets this super evolution, develops into their own civilization that humanity ends up coming into contact with. And books two and three also deal with similar themes in different ways and the way it all winds together and the story that winds up being told in the third book i i can't pick which one of these is my favorite because each of them is quite different feeling when i even when i originally started book two i was like this is really kind of different from book one i thought that it would be a continuation of this direct planet and yet we're going back in time it's in a different terraforming project but you have to trust the author. It all comes together. This is another series that I've been pushing at everybody and telling them that they really need to read. In keeping with weird science, we have Blighted Stars. I've only read this book and its sequel one time, but still the characters and the setting have really stuck with me. This first book is a survival adventure story. The main characters crash on this planet and they have to survive but there's a lot of politics going on behind the scenes. The two main characters are actually on different sides of this schism. There's one side that is a rich mercantile house. They have a lot of power and wealth and deal a lot with the industry and society. And the other side feel feels like the technology that's being used is actually ruining these planets that they need to terraform. One of the main characters is the revolutionary and one is the heir. They wind up coming together. Again, the character exploration, the conflicts that are going on, the dynamics there are great, but then also aspects of the world building, horror elements to the technology, and I think it's just a very interesting mixture. Sentience from unexpected places that has its own goals, messing with things. Fun sentience, we have Murderbot. A list of my favorite science fiction would not be complete without Murderbot. This has become a comfort series for me. When my husband was injured and he couldn't escape, I read him the entire series. That was before we owned the audiobooks, which we do now. It follows a sec unit, a security unit, that is a mixture of human and technologic components, basically forming an android. And it is hired by the corporation that owns it to be the security forces for, for scientists that are exploring, they're learning about new flora, fauna, where they are, and tend to try to get themselves into trouble on accident. Sec unit's job is to keep them safe, but, What's special about the security unit is it was able to hack its own governor module so the corporation doesn't really control it anymore even though it still pretends that it does. After some traumatic events in its past, it now calls itself Murderbot. And what Murderbot really wants is to be left alone to enjoy the media, but yet also still wants to be good at its job and like protect the people that it cares about. Most of the stories in the series are novellas, each one building upon this past history and expanding the world, but there is also a novel length story. I find Birderbot funny, charming. The sense of humor may or may not appeal to you. That's the main thing I've heard. If people can't really connect with Murderbot, I, I feel like it's normally because they're not connecting with that self-deprecating sense of humor, but I absolutely love it. Humorous story, we have Andy Weir. The Martian is the one that I've read several times and the movie is one of my favorite movies. It's a comfort watch for me. So it's a favorite in that sense for sure. It's about an astronaut, Mark Wat Watney, who is on one of the first crews 
sent to Mars and accidentally gets left behind when an emergency happens and then has to survive. Back on Earth when they realize that he's alive, they band together to try to bring him home. And it's really the humor in here. The very first line of the story is, I'm pretty much fucked. That's my considered opinion. Fucked. And so that's the sense of humor that you get. He's kind of really corny. One of Andy Weir's other novels, totally blanking, one of my favorite novels two years ago. It's gonna drive me crazy. I can't think of the name of it right now. A first contact novel where the main character is sent on a mission to save humanity itself. And I might actually really like that story more than The Martian, but I've only read it the one time. So I, I feel like I'm due for a reread of that one. And I believe they're making a movie of it as well. That story, it took me a little bit longer to get into because it deals with um, amnesia, which is not normally my favorite trope. But by the end, you're just like, Ugh, I love this story. If you haven't read Andy Weir, I really recommend either The Martian, if you want more of a straightforward story, or uh, Project Hail Mary, that's what it is. Or Project Hail Mary. It's a little bit more of a complicated story, but also very impactful. Finishing up with a couple of oldies, but goodies. Ender's Game. I haven't read this one for years, but considering that it follows a bunch of children, it's really compelling. Granted, the children are super smart, and the premise of this story, if if you don't know, is that these super smart children are brought up to be trained in the military on the space station because there is an alien invading force that is threatening to destroy humanity. And for whatever reason, these children are the ones that need to become the commanders for the spaceships and the military forces to take out that enemy. That's more of a superficial explanation of what the story deals with, but you're primarily following Ender and his companions as Ender is going through the ringer at this military academy and seems to be the destined one to be the leader, but people are really going to make him prove it. The story is quite dark when you think about it, but it's not just about his military adventure. It's also a first contact story that is both intimate and subtle and also really destructive at the same time and it launches a larger series. This is another one where when I finished it really really made me think at the end. And finally we have Dune by Frank Herbert. It is a classic space opera dealing with these very powerful houses. Essentially in this story they are um, one of the powerful houses has just, the emperor has told them to leave control of this planet and the Atreides house is moving in to take control of this planet. Very important because on this planet they mine spice, which is what enables space travel and it's quite addictive. But House Atreides knows that this transfer of power is probably a trap of some kind. So there's this larger political game at play. Although Paul, the heir to House Atreides, has just grown up learning self-defense, expecting traps and poison at any moment because the inter-house rivalries are quite deadly. There's a layer of magic and prophecy interwoven with all of this. Paul's mother is a witch character who um, was supposed to have a daughter for house politics so that she could marry the son of this rival house, but instead had a son in following in keeping with this prophecy now that Paul is on Arrakis dune desert planet the prophecy starts to unfold definitely deep space opera when I first read this I was really enraptured with like the Bene Gesserit which is the witch kind of aspect of it the 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 cutthroat politics and some of the other uh, social implications of that also involving the native population, the, the Fremen. So it's, it's a, there's a lot going on in the story. I'm holding up Heretics of Dune, I just realized. <laughs> Here we go. Dune, not Heretics of Dune. So I've read through book five or six or so, and in my opinion, it gets, gets bizarre, but I've not read like the expanded Dune universe, you know, the, the other uh, novels that have been written by Frank Herbert's son, I believe. But anyway, this is a classic sci-fi that I feel is worth trying if you've never read it. There's several adaptations of it. If you've watched any of the adaptations and are intrigued, the, birth, the book is worth a read. And an honorable mention of favorite science fiction. I spent 
my youth reading the Star Wars Expanded Universe novels. Any birthday, Christmas, I wanted gift cards and book money so that I could go buy the next book in the long chronology of, of these stories. There are particular series and characters that will live in my heart forever, so I just have to mention the, that the Star Wars old expanded universe, the old canon. I spent a, I spent a lot of time there in my head. Well, if you stuck with me this far, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this video and learning a little bit more about some of my favorite science, science fiction stories. Please tell me what yours are below. And as always, don't forget to support your local library. Thanks. <laughs>